I will often get a clarinet with a ring that is either loose and it just falls off, or it's a bit loose and it's tight because they put it on backwards. A lot of people put them on backwards, but they're actually got a bit of a taper inside them and they should, they have a way to go on. They should go on that way. So what you got to do is make that ring tight again. An easy way to do it is take a piece of garbage bag, put the ring on top like that, put it on part way, trim off the extra like this. And also on the outside. A clarinet should be never ever be left with loose rings because that means when you're sticking the, the piece the, the socket that goes into the into the hole with the rings containing it's gonna split the wood so just do that do that now it's on there nice and tight and I can't get it off it's just so tight that's the way it should be and in some cases you're gonna you're gonna notice that oh that's tighter on my cork too in which case you might have to sand the cork a little bit, but the ring should always be tight. And that's an easy, easy way to do it. When a barrel starts and wasn't tight and then it starts, gets tight, what it is, is, let me just point this. This part of the wood right here on the barrel or on the joint, is binding when it gets and hits this part of the wood here, up here. And so what you got to do is decrease the, that wood. So I, what I do is this. There's different ways. You can put it in a lathe and do it. Or I, I, I'm pretty handy at doing it this way. Just take a knife, scrape it around. If, if I'm advising people to do this, I'll, I'll tell them to get some 100 grit net, new, um, sandpaper or something, sand it down a little bit. Anyways, and then just do it a bit at a time until you get it where you want it, and then that's it. But that is common. I don't think it's rare that a, clarinet, a new clarinet comes through here that I don't have to do that to. Mm. Pretty well always have to do that. Um, but it's important. They've got to be tight. It, it's, either, it's, either, it's either loose ring or it's too tight. This wood is very heavy. It'll sink in water if you put it in water. And the ends of this are coated in wax so it doesn't dry out. This is this is made like an inch and three sixteenths square, so it's just the right size for making the top joint of a clarinet or making clarinet barrels. This is how it comes off the tree. When they cut it down, it's got bark around it, all the way around like that. And sometimes now, because this wood is getting so scarce, some manufacturers will include a little bit of that in some spots if it means they can get a bit more use out of the wood and then they will dye it so you won't even maybe notice that but it's very heavy listen to this like i dropped a brick right yeah it's really heavy <laughs> and expensive i don't know how much this would cost a, a lot One reason that your clarinet teacher will be telling you to pull the clarinet in closer to your body and play it like this, rather than like this, is this. If you put your hands on the reed like this, and it's in the, it's, it's in the position like that, and then you bring the clarinet down closer, what's it doing? It's exposing more of the reed to vibrate, right? Simple. That's the reason. Whenever you practice and whenever you play, if possible, do it standing up. Because standing up, you have reasonably good posture. Sitting down, you can't have good posture. And a lot of students I've seen, they're like this, which is even worse posture. You got to have it so you can get air down in here. You got to get it so that when you take, you got to think of your insides, the shape of a light bulb. Small at the top and then get bigger like this. So when you take in air, this part here is just a place for air to go through to get down here. So if you one way to see if you're doing it right is put your hands on your waist and take a deep breath. And if you don't notice anything, then cough. <coughs> then you can definitely feel that pushing out. You want to get it so that pushes out. You want to get the air down here and then build up pressure. And that gives intensity and projection to your sound. 
the ligature, this is called delrin, this, this, this part here, which um, is fairly, fairly solid. And this is uh, like piano wire, but it's stainless steel piano wire. And this is all stainless steel too. Um, here are what we call the floating rails. These are rails that are arched like that. So that when you tighten this one screw, it puts pressure that way, which puts pressure on the reed on both, if I have something flat here, if, if, if I'm putting pressure on the reed, even, even if the bark warps when it goes down there and up there, then eventually it tightens to, it's gonna be given equal pressure on those two parts of the reed. But there's two of these, the one here as well. So it puts pressure on equal parts of four of the reed. Now, if you look at, at, a, at this down this way, I don't know if you can see that. If you put it like that, you can see that between the wires, the wires never touch the mouthpiece. The only thing that touches the mouthpiece is the reed and those six pieces of delrin. And um, so everything is free to vibrate, which includes the reed and the back end of the reed and the ligature and the mouthpiece and parts of the clarinet too.